It might not be that all swiping, all populous and snaring behemoth the Pokemon Go was across 2016 and 2018 summers, but Pokemon Let's Go is a damn fine game. There's certainly more to it than the aforementioned app in every respect, and that's down to the whole thing being a quasi-remake of Pokemon Yellow. I say quasi because the majority of gameplay is 1998's delightful top-down RPG given the modern-day graphics treatment, but with Pokemon Go's catching mechanics thrown over the top. Gone are the random battles as you can now see and select what you want to hoover up instead. XP is then doled out as though you had fought, but it's peppered across your entire team, so no more endless grinding to turn that Magikarp into a Gyarados. Overall, this makes for a far snappier, somehow more addictive experience, and is exactly what old-school poker fans have been clamoring for since, well, Gen 2. Returning to the Kanto region is a delight from top to bottom, and there's a ludicrous amount of things to do, though only a fraction are made remotely obvious. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and this is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu slash Eevee, 14 tips, tricks, and hidden features you didn't know. Did you know that what Culture also does a board game? It's true, we do. And you can purchase it at shop.whatculture. Who knows, I might even sign a copy or two to devalue them a little bit. Number 14, trade heart scales for forgotten moves. So if you're anything like me, you'll finish a battle, get offered a new move, and your Pokemon will just not want to learn it. Of course, you could just be happy with the set of four abilities you have at the time, though either way, there is a way to get your lost moves back again. Just head to the Pokemon League area at the top of Victory Road. It's the path all the way to the far west, and talk to the woman in the top right. Here she'll offer to trade old moves for heart scales, which are one of the various gifts your Pikachu or Eevee will give you, depending on how much you're smothering them in affection. Yep, rubbing the living hell out of your Pokemon's belly will actually benefit the entire team, so get rubbing. Number 13. In multiplayer, put your Pokemon in order to skip the countdown. Dueling Pokemon and multiplayer go together like the PS1 Classic and Crash Bandit, uh, Spyro the D uh, two ri uh, Mr. Driller? But one thing that'll get in the way of your fun is the minute and a half lobby timer as you wait to fight. To bypass it, click on any of your Pokemon and tap enter to slot them into a specific rollout. This is how you dictate what order your squad will deploy in, and be aware that if you do start allocating Pokemon, you have to do all six. Entering any number less means only those Pokemon will be in the battle, so if you do start allocating a lineup, finish it. Number 12. You can get some Mega Evolution Stones for free. Thanks to being canon, Pokemon X and Y's Mega Evolutions are in Let's Go, but the majority are tucked away behind expensive stones you'll have to buy from the appropriately named Stone Salesman in Indigo Plateau. However, you can Mega Evolve a Charizard, Blastoise, or Venusaur by returning to Pallet Town and going inside Professor Oak's lab after you've become Pokemon Champion. Once inside, talk to Blue and he'll give you the requisite stones for Mega Blastoise, Mega Venusaur, and Mega Charizard. The latter has two forms as well, X or Y, and once you've chosen, you can't go back. Number 11, you can style your Pikachu slash Eevee's hair. Shown in some of the earlier trailers as a mighty fetching Pikachu was seen sporting a mighty quiff, if you head into the play with screen, just tap X to bring up the main menu and then it's the topmost option after the tutorial, you can change both Pikachu and Eevee's hairstyles. Weirdly only available in handheld mode, you need to press two fingers to the screen and make a rotating motion above the eyes of either Pikachu or Eevee. Keep going and a small cloud will form and then burst, revealing a new hairstyle. Repeat to cycle through all on offer, then join the debate as to whether Pikachu with a fringe is adorable or terrifying. Number 10. Why catch combos matter, especially in the early game. Keep it up, the game screams at you after catching multiple of the same creature in a row, but why does this matter? Turns out it affects spawn rates and the levels of the creatures you're bagging in that respective area. Make a point of only hoovering up Nidorans, for example, and you'll start catching higher level ones. Depending on the region of the world, this is also how you spawn rarer Pokemon, but for the most part, if there's a species that you just want in your main squad, grind it out and catch something truly worthwhile instead. As a bonus tip, running from battle doesn't break your catching chain bonus, so if a Pokemon keeps escaping and you think it might flee altogether, do yourself a favor and do that first, then try again. Number 9. Talk to the Move Tutor for powerful free upgrades. Available across an assortment of Poké Centers, you'll first find the Move Tutor in Cerulean City. He's usually standing to the top right of the center in question, and speaking to him will open up a dialogue where he offers you one of three unique moves for your Pikachu or your Eevee. All coming with god-awful slash brilliant names, Pikachu is limited to electric, water, or flying attacks, whereas Eevee can do all those minus flying, plus fire, psychic, dark, grass, ice, and fairy. Return to this person multiple times to spec your moveset out. For Eevee especially, you can quickly get a very effective assortment of attacks. Number 8. Catching is much easier in handheld mode. 
I cannot stress this enough. If you're sick of trying to wag the Joy-Con in a direction approximating the target Pokemon, just switch to handheld mode. Here, the game shifts to not only let you move around with the left Joy-Con as buttons stay on the right, but catching is done with gyroscope aiming rather than flicking at the screen. Far, far more accurate than motion controls, this means you can line up shots on difficult or rare Pokemon with ease. It might feel strange running to grab your Switch out of its dock during a high-stakes encounter, but trust me, the benefits are tenfold. Plus, no more wasted Pokeballs. Number 7. Shaking your Joy-Con is a shortcut to interacting with Pikachu or Eevee. Interacting with Pikachu or Eevee is a mode made for maximum doll, but you can get there even faster by waggling the Joy-Con or the Pokeball accessory. Literally just shake it and the screen will transition to where you can caress your chosen partner on and feed them all sorts of lovely things. Doll. Number 6. Keep your Pikachu slash Eevee happy for secret items and moves in battle. You know that random Pikachu or Eevee icon that occasionally pops up in the corner of the screen with them holding a Joy-Con? It means your partner has something to share or do. In the overworld, this icon denotes that they've made you a gift, but in battle, their love benefits you twofold. Firstly, there's higher chance Pikachu or Eevee will shake off status effects through sheer willpower alone, alongside dodging attacks at a higher rate. You'll know because a heart icon will pop above their head, and flavor text points out that it was your bond that allowed this to happen. Secondly, that same Joy-Con icon will appear. Shaking now sees Pikachu or Eevee perform a devastating one-off attack or a party stat buff, and it only appears if you've been treating them well beforehand. Take the time to bond with your chosen creature across your journey, it might just win you a crucial duel. Number 5. Bypass version-exclusive Pokémon with Pokémon GO Every generation of Pokémon has come with version-exclusive creatures to encourage trading amongst friends. Though there are a couple of in-game ways to acquire certain species from the opposing edition, a beauty sat in the middle of Vermilion City will give Eevee owners an Arcanine for 5 Meowths or a Persia for Pikachu owners, you can bypass the whole thing by linking your Pokémon GO account. Done in Fuchsia City when you can access the Pokemon Go Park, there are no addition-based restrictions on what you can bring across. Once a creature is transferred, it can't go back, but if you're looking to fill out your Pokedex, use this method and transfer precisely what's missing, providing you found it on the app first, of course. Number 4. Time your throw with a Pokemon's animation to help with catching a pointer for catching high-level or late-game Pokémon who refuse to stand still, know that the shrinking ring around them keeps moving at the same speed, even when you can't see it. For a number of creatures, you won't have the time to wait for the ring to be at its optimum small size, so plan ahead and imagine where it's going to be. Time your throw to when a target's idle or catch animation is about to stop, and you can nab them before another one begins. It's tricky and usually means you're releasing a throw whilst they're still moving, but it is often the only way to acquire the best Pokémon in the game. Number 3. How to trigger a shiny variant Pokémon Back to the catch combos, you'll accrue for bagging the same creature over and over. If you get a multiplier high enough, 11 times, 21 times, or 31 times in a row, the odds increase that your next encounter will be a shiny. Now, shiny Pokémon don't serve any purpose other than their namesake and a palette swap, but if your 20 plus catch is in, finally netting a variant color scheme on top of a good level and solid stats is icing on the cake. Though many super fans are trying to get their catch combos up into the hundreds, because video games, 31 times is when the odds multiplier maxes out, so don't waste your time. Number 2. The Single Player Co-op Method It might sound ridiculous, but you can play Pokemon Let's Go in co-op by yourself. Done by shaking the other Joy-Con to enter two-player but keeping a controller in each hand, this actually benefits catching in a couple of cool ways. First, you're pretty much doing Street Fighter-style Hadoukens to bag Pokémon because you're throwing two hands at once, but more importantly, have both balls connect on a target Pokémon at the same time to trigger a unique animation that boosts your catch odds. Many trainers are now playing in this particular power stance, and Pokémon Let's Go's drop-in, drop-out co-op means you can run around with just one Joy-Con until you need to bring another player in. Next time a rare or valuable Pokémon turns up, think of this. Number 1. How Get Ready Really Works Ending on the most essential tip of all, though the game teaches you the basics of hitting Get Ready and then swinging to throw a Pokeball, there's more to catching overall. Basically, when you're hitting Ready, that's you locking your Joy-Con in 3D space for the Switch to track. For the most accurate throws, you don't want to hit Ready and then steady your Joy-Con before throwing. You want to level it out, hit Ready, and then perform the full pullback throw motion. Essentially, the Switch needs to know where the motion starts and ends, something it can't do if you're still getting into position after hitting Get Ready. It'll end up reading any movement as part of the prescribed throw and mess up everything altogether. By knowing this slight tweak, you can throw to either side or with greater power to catch moving Pokémon or birds that are higher up or further away. Again, it takes practice and motion controls aren't the best no matter which game, but if you're having trouble, try this method. And that's my list. Let me know down in the comments if there are any other tips and tricks that you found for Pokémon Let's Go. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Don't forget to check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.